do I need a camcorder? That's the question we're going to answer in this video. Today we're going to talk about low light capabilities of camcorders, the different size of sensors and camcorders, older generation technology versus new generation, what that brings you, 8-bit versus 10-bit, if a field monitor added to an older camcorder can save you some money but provide the same kind of image quality, and why would you use a camcorder compared to something like a cinema camera? Isn't there a better tool? Well, if those are the types of questions you'd like answered, stick around because that's the video we're making today. All right, friends, let me share with you the testing setup to help you understand exactly what you're looking at. I'm not going to always go over the details, so this will remain true for the remainder of the clips. Here, you're actually seeing two images. An image recorded on the 150 megabit per second 4K60 internal recording from the Panasonic HCX1, as well as the uh, DNX HRSQ resolution from the external field recorder on the Ninja V. The point here is to look at both images to see if there's a difference from one to the other. Now, as such, you can see that change or that format a little bit differently as I've applied a color grade down the diagonal of the screen. This lets you know now which images of the screen you're looking at. One is the Panasonic, the other is the external recording on the Ninja. Can you tell a difference? What we are noticing here is that with this color grade, which you'll see applied to the next image in just a moment, we're just seeing that we can bring out some additional color, how things look, uh, if there's any moiré or tearing. This is very important because we're actually panning quite a bit quicker than you would normally pan for a scene like this. This is a 180 degrees. We're recording right now at 60 frames a second. It's being interpolated down to 30 frames a second for YouTube. And we would normally look to see if we could find any kind of tearing or things like that. This is something that we're not seeing, which is very good. And those astute uh, viewers out there will know the reason we're not seeing any tearing is because we're using an overcrank shutter speed rather than the 1 1 20th of a second. We're right around 1 4 50th, 1 500th of a second to get these shots. Now that color grade has been applied to both camera scenes at the same time, and can you tell a difference? I'm going to bet that you can't, and we're going to go ahead and wrap up that first question down in the comments below. You can leave me what you think, but I would share with you that when you're looking at good lighting situations, recording to an external field recorder, even on older technology, won't help that much. And that's something we're going to talk about a little bit more later. But we are seeing a little bit of noise, and I think we can do something about that. So in this scene, we've gone ahead and applied neat video noise reduction to both camera angles. Once again, you're still seeing two shots right here, divided diagonally down the middle of the screen. And we're seeing now that all of that uh, noise, color chroma noise that we got from the color grade, specifically in the sock guy, has disappeared. So it's looking quite a bit better. In this instance, I think we got a really great shot and a baseline to begin answering that question. So take it away to the next scene. Yeah, so that first example was just a nice, real easy one for a camera, specifically something with an older sensor. But This is 8-bit footage, but even newer sensors right there would still have 8-bit color banding and things like that to deal with. Notice we didn't see any of that. And even then, we did a very strong orange color grade at the end to kind of really push the orange up and pull the teal back, something that's very popular with movies and things like that. We didn't see any of that color banding. And at the end, we added a nice little bit of noise reduction in there from uh, neat video in order to help us kind of clear up a little bit of the artifacts that were created from that extreme color grade. Otherwise, very, very clean image, very nice, and it produced itself quite well. Let's move along to the next thing. We might say, what are we going to do next? We want to look at some kind of footage that might really be indicative of a sunset or things like that. And in this sense, and I think moving to a sunset would be a great opportunity to show what directly filming into the sun looks like with the flares that you might get from that, as well as how your foreground and background elements might blur, plus looking that long shot of the lens. When we talk about a camcorder, we're talking about more than just a sensor. We are also talking about the long throw that the lens gives you. And I think this next shot will do quite a good job. So let's go check out this sunset. And as just a reminder, once again, you are seeing two camera inputs at the same time, diagonally across the bottom. I'm not going to talk about settings or specifications here. I just want you to look and see this beautiful long shot from a pier that's kind of floating <laughs> all the way across the Elizabeth River. 
Now, this is supported on a monopod. I'm crouching using my right hand to control the zoom rocker and my left hand on a mount that helps me stabilize. And this is really indicative of the type of shot that you can get with a camcorder. So although we are talking about whether a field recorder can help in a situation of low light and we are shooting in more of a sunset scenario, we're actually evaluating the long zoom that you might get on a all-in-one camcorder like this and why it's so important. Just look how far away we are. And once again, these two images are showing you what would be the uh, direct output from the camera. There's been no color grading so far. And I think that this image speaks for itself all alone. It's just absolutely beautiful. And you can push it even further in camera. And in-camera edits are something we'll talk about in just a moment. Now, we've gone ahead and applied an extreme color grade to this image. Once again, we are still having that handheld shot on a monopod or a monopod stabilized shot as we creep backwards. This long, slow pull is a beautiful kind of shot that really sets the mood. Even with this color grade, you'll notice that something you would expect to see in 8-bit footage, specifically with older sensors, isn't there. Do you see any banding in the sky? Recognizing that you may be looking at this on YouTube or on a mobile device that is data starved, there, your viewing device may be uh, compressing this signal. But to me, to my eyes here on my production monitor, it looks absolutely beautiful. And as we pull back, here's a little pro tip for you. It's always beautiful to make sure that your focus is set to where you start your pull. But as you pull back, you will actually see that that focus will stay the same but your foreground elements, just like this chain in the pier, and the pylons will slowly come into focus. And that long zoom is just really shown. Just an absolutely beautiful image right here altogether. That silhouette of the pier is something else. Now, what I've done here is stabilized the shot using warp stabilizer, as well as added neat video noise reduction, and I've crisped up the sharpening specific to uh, the vertical edges. It's a special feature that you can use in neat video, which is a, a great way to, to do that. However, on 8-bit footage, usually that would incur some kind of wrath or artifacting specific to quickly changing moving subjects. And as you can see right here, we don't have any of that quickly changing moving artifacting in the water. That stabilization specific from Warp Stabilizer has really locked this shot down and it just looks absolutely beautiful. I mean, this is the type of stuff that really puts your documentary work or your ENG work uh, and takes it to a whole new level. So a beautiful color grade, some noise reduction and stabilization. And in just a few moments, that original shot turned into something as beautiful as this. Enjoy. Okay, in that example, you're looking and you might say, yeah, that's fine. It looks great. It's an interesting 8-bit image, no problems. Tell us a little bit about your setup and what you're doing and share with us why this is important. Well, if we're trying to answer the question about low light and whether or not an external field recorder will help a camera that's got an older sensor but still has the ability to output high resolution through an HDMI port or an SDI port, well, what could that do? Would a recorder be helpful in this instance? And I'm going to say in this bright light situation, no, there's not really much detail that's being pulled out right here, but you let me know what you think. So the next question might be, what about something a little bit more challenging? Let's, uh, lower the light a little bit to dusk and let's get some things that might have moving water and something bright like neon inside of it and still try to expose for a backlit sky and that's what we're going to do in this next example okay so we've been looking at a lot of shots that really showcase how you can get a great image out of an 8-bit sensor camera even an older camera but this one i've decided to take it up a little bit so we're here at the water side in Norfolk, and we've got neon lights reflecting on the water. The water should uh, be nice and smooth. But we, now we've gone ahead from that original shot and added a, just a gigantic color grade to it. What we have done is really pushed the color specifically to the saturation as well as the luminance values. You can see that in what I've pulled up there. And that introduces issues and artifacting, that little specular highlighting up there. It's just the way an 8-bit image breaks down. You would not see this breakdown on a 10-bit image because a 10-bit image reacts completely differently. Now, what I've done here is gone ahead and applied an actual real color grade to represent sunset like you might expect. And I've also gone ahead and added warp stabilizer to kind of stabilize the handheld shot. You'll notice that even with the monopod stabilizing 
uh, the shot that's coming up, the original shot, it's still kind of wavy, and that's because I'm on a floating dock as well as I'm on a monopod, so it's not a completely stabilized platform. In any event, the original input was a beautiful shot, which could be used right out of camera, but just three minutes in post-production software, and you had that beautiful uh, ready-to-deliver shot. Here I want to talk a little bit more about low light, okay? So we've shown where you can break up an image with an 8-bit sensor, but let's see just how far we can push low light. With this original shot switching over to a post-production shot of the Battleship Wisconsin down at Nauticus in Norfolk, you can see that we can get a really beautiful color palette, but we also introduce quite a bit of that color fringing up there. And that noise is now reduced and warp stabilizer has been added with neat uh, video noise reduction as well as warp stabilizer. And we have just an absolutely cleared up shot. This is a five minute edit right here. Now I wanted to show you all three of those shots together in horizontal banding right now. You can see the bottom is the original shot. The middle is the one with neat video as well as warp stabilizer. And the top one is, well, just the original. Continuing on over, I wanted to pull back in some really dark scenes of a city and show you what the sensor is capable of. Currently, you are just looking at one image. We are not switching over to the two images. I'm just using the internal recording with the same editing techniques. And look at this. We've gone ahead and began cranking our shutter to match as the synchronization speed with our film frame rate. And normally that would incur quite a bit of artifacts, but notice you don't see any right here. Panasonic does a great job with the synchronization shutter, and it works quite a bit better than what you might expect on even a mirrorless camera. So what I'm saying is we're not using the 180 degree rule right here, and yet we're not experiencing the issues that we would normally see. In fact, by not using the 180 degree rule here, and by panning slowly and zooming slowly, we're able to double the amount of light that's hitting the sensor, allowing us to photograph and film in low light capabilities that we normally wouldn't see. Yes, I have color graded this image, I have warp stabilized all of these train images, and I have, of course, added neat video noise reduction. This is the type of thing that you can do in less than 10 minutes on this little piece right here from import to export and then give it to wherever you need it to go. Deliver it to your client, send it over to the broadcast, whatever. Now, what I wanted to do is end up and talk as we're looking at this, same conditions apply. Warp stabilizer has been added. Neat video noise reduction and color grade has been added. This again is now the ninja footage right here. And can you tell any difference? You're only seeing one image. But this is the type of thing that you can get with a camcorder that's all in one and inclusive. You know, there, there aren't a lot of things to carry along with you. And some of these long shots that we're seeing are things that you just wouldn't get with a mirrorless camera. If you carried out a, uh, an FX line cinema camera or the C-Line uh, Canon cameras, you know, you're going to get absolutely better image quality specific to low light. Maybe it's better image quality. That, that's something that's to be determined. There would be less work in post-production to remove noise. That's the truth. But you might not necessarily get something special or additional. And when you look at shots like this, you definitely would have to carry more than just one lens and one camera to get these images. Guys, I'm Rob with Robert Hand Photography. I hope you have found this video helpful. Leave your comments down below. I'll get to them. If you're a subscriber, you'll definitely get an answer from me. I want to thank you for watching and remind you, I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye for now.